In this course, you will need to show your conversance with a number of masterworks by describing them. When you describe music, don't get stuck on likes and dislikes. Hopefully you can move beyond that and describe the music itself. To develop the mindset for doing this, let's clarify how you regard music. If you regard music as a lifestyle accessory, you will treat it as a sort of commodity that accompanies life's activities without penetrating what's in those sounds or what's behind those sounds. On the other hand, if you treat music as an object of interest, you can develop the mindset that will allow you to dig deep into what's interesting or notable about a particular work. That brings us to the question, what is interesting in music? Here are some ideas to which you may add your own. Music is interesting when it invites us to think and to feel. When it presents multiple layers to discover when it holds true to its own inner logic, when it balances complexity and simplicity, when it evokes the time and place of its creation, when it speaks to the universal human condition, when it has endured over time, and I'll have to say that I personally find a work of music more interesting when I've taken the leap to get acquainted with it. Beyond your ability to find something interesting in a work of music, what you bring to the music also affects your listening experience and how you write about it. So now let's explore the listening frameworks you bring to your music listening experience. Does your response to the music relate to how beautiful or ugly the music seems? How simple or complex it seems? Whether or not it seems to be making you a more knowledgeable or cultured person? The feelings seemingly portrayed or expressed in the music? How it helps you to momentarily forget your ordinary life. Surprise or the lack of it in the music. Your own background in music. Whether or not it is in your comfort zone. How logically the music seems to be put together as one section follows another. The political, social, and art events that you associate with the music. Moments that strike you as funny in the music. Images or stories seemingly evoked by the music. A sense of the music going somewhere, then getting there. How many times you have heard it, and how much you know about it. How it relates to your emotional state at the moment. How much you revere or disdain the composer, style, or performers. The social setting where it is heard. The sense of tension building and tension release in the music. Instrumental or vocal timbres in the music. The words, if there are any. In addition to the interesting things you can find in music, and the frameworks that you bring to music listening, 
you may also need to hone your skills for music listening. Here are seven essential skills for music listening by Elliot Schwartz. What listening skills do you need? Develop your sensitivity to music. Try to respond aesthetically to all sounds, from the hum of the refrigerator motor or the paddling of oars on a lake, to the tones of a cello or muted trumpet. When we really hear sounds, we may find them all quite expressive, magical, and even beautiful. On a more complex level, try to relate sounds to each other in patterns the successive notes in a melody, or the interrelationships between an ice cream truck jingle and nearby children's games. Time is a crucial component of the musical experience. Develop a sense of time as it passes. Duration, motion, and the placement of events within a time frame. How long is 30 seconds, for example? A given duration of clock time will feel very different if contexts of activity and motion are changed. Develop a musical memory. While listening to a piece, try to recall familiar patterns relating new events to past ones and placing them all within a durational frame. This facility may take a while to grow, but it eventually will. And once you discover that you can use your memory in this way, just as people discover that they really can swim or ski or ride a bicycle, life will never be the same. If we want to read, write, or talk about music, we must acquire a working vocabulary. Music is basically a nonverbal art, and its unique events and effects are often too elusive for everyday words. We need special words to describe them, however inadequately. Try to develop musical concentration, especially when listening to lengthy pieces. Composers and performers learn how to fill different time frames in appropriate ways using certain gestures and patterns for long works and others for brief ones. The listener must also learn to adjust to varying durations. It may be easy to concentrate on a selection lasting a few minutes, but virtually impossible to maintain attention when confronted with a half-hour Beethoven symphony or a three-hour Verdi opera. Composers are well aware of this problem. They provide so many musical landmarks and guidelines during the course of a long piece that even if listening focus wanders, you can tell where you are. Try to listen objectively and dispassionately. Concentrate on what's there and not what you hope or wish would be there. At the early stages of directed listening, when a working vocabulary for music is being introduced, it is important that you respond using that vocabulary as often as possible. In this way, you can relate and compare pieces that present different styles, cultures, and centuries. Try to focus upon what's there in an objective sense, and don't be dismayed if a limited vocabulary restricts your earliest responses. Bring experience and knowledge to the listening situation. That includes not only your concentration and growing vocabulary, but information about the music itself, its composer, history, and social context. Such knowledge makes the experience of listening that much more enjoyable. There may appear to be a conflict between this suggestion and the previous one, in which listeners were urged to focus just on what's there. Ideally, it would be fascinating to hear a new piece of music with fresh expectations and truly innocent ears as though we were Martians. But such objectivity doesn't exist. 
all listeners approach a new piece with ears that have been trained by prejudices, personal experiences, and memories. Some of these may get in the way of listening to music. Try to replace these with other items that might help focus upon the work rather than individual feelings. Of course, the work is much more than the sounds heard at any one sitting in a concert hall. It also consists of previous performances, recorded performances, the written notes on manuscript paper, and all the memories, reviews, and critiques of these written notes and performances ad infinitum. In acquiring information about any of these factors, we are simply broadening our total awareness of the work itself.